there's a lot of confusion, there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of things going on in this country. It affects me, and I'm sure it affects some of you. And you wonder, what is going on? Uh, I'll simply say this, we're living in bad times, but we're also living in end times. So how should we be and what should we do? We need to be people that look to the Lord. And I want to read some scriptures for you as we do that before we actually get into our main study. So what do we do during this time that we're experiencing? Let's look at John chapter 12, um, verse 21. If you don't want to turn there, you don't have to. I'll read it nice and clear. You can write it down. John chapter 12, and we'll start at verse uh, 20. But let me pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, as, as I say this prayer for this group that is gathered here with me in person, and those that are gathered right now with us on Facebook Live, we call upon you. Lord, we, we uh, like Jehoshaphat says, I don't know what to do with this great army that is coming at us all these different ways. But Jehoshaphat said, but our eyes are on you. And because of that, you gave them a great victory and they defeated the enemy. Our enemy is not a white person, a black person, an Asian person, a Hispanic person. Our enemy is Satan. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places, principalities, rulers of darkness, and unclean spirits. There is an enemy that is unseen, Satan and demons. And we need to fight the enemy through prayer and the word. Help us to do that, Lord. This is real. So, Father, we pray for this country. We pray for Seattle. Lord, we don't know what the government's going to do to Chaz, that little six-block area where they declared that it's now their own country. They have their own law enforcement. We don't know what's going to happen up there. We don't know what's going to happen with other people. We don't know who else is going to be killed. We don't know who else is going to uh, do something. But we trust you. That's why fear, depression, anger, and violence is not becoming of the people of God. So we ask you to help us now. Me as a pastor, standing here, may I do and say the right thing. Because Lord, we ask your kingdom come, your rulership. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 John chapter 12, verse 20 says, and we'll read a few scriptures. Pay close attention to this. Let this be encouraging to your heart. It says, now there were certain Greeks. Certain who? Greeks. Certain who? Greeks. There were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. And then they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir... We wish to see Jesus. And then Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn Andrew and Philip told Jesus. So during a time of a feast and a lot of people and a lot of hoopla, some men that were Greeks came to Philip and the disciples and said, hey, we would see Jesus, or we wish to see Jesus. So in all this excitement and in all this uh, 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 festivities, even today, may our prayer be, hey, I would see Jesus. There in Calvary Chapel, Chino Valley, in my pastor David's uh, church, uh, it, it says in the back, here it says El Shaddai, but at his church it says we would see Jesus. And I pray that you're here because you want to see Jesus. And those of you on Facebook that you're listening and watching because you would see Jesus during the times that we live in. There's another scripture um, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. And if you can get that, uh, if not, I'll read it to you. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. It says this. Well, let's read verse 1, take it in full context here. Look at verse 1. 
and Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, but we'll focus on verse 2, it says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that would so easily ensnares us. Can somebody say amen to that? We carry weights and we carry sin that, that weighs us down. And here the author of Hebrews is saying, let us lay all the weight, let us lay all the sin which entraps us, let us lay it down. And then he says, but do this, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Folks, there is a race that's set before us. If you don't know what it is, then you need to find out what is it. And where do you find it? None other than the Word of God. That's where we find um, this race. This race. Paul said he ran the race so that he could obtain that crown that the Lord has for him. I'm running this race as well. You know, if I'm not standing in front of you or, or jumping on Facebook Live or trying to get a positive message across, I'm running the race, man. I'm doing the best I could and I'm trying to say what God wants me to say and I'm trying not to be a newscaster and I'm trying not to be a politician and I'm trying not to give you a moment by moment on what's happening in the community or in the world. I want to give you what the Bible says. That's my goal and that's my purpose. I hope that's what you're into because if you're feeding yourself so much the news and the politics and, 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 the, and all that stuff, it's going to affect your life, and you're going to start to act like that. You'll, your posts on Facebook are going to be political. Um, your posts on Facebook are going to be racial uh, uh, or, or whatever it is that you're into. We're, we, we need to make sure we're into the Lord because if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be taken care of, food, shelter, clothing, and all the unrest will be taken care of. And that's found in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But look what verse 2 says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. It says, looking unto Jesus, looking unto Jesus, looking unto Jesus. The Greek said we would see Jesus. Jesus says to look and seek first the kingdom of God. And here we see in Hebrews, it says, hey, looking unto Jesus, man, looking unto Jesus. Refocus, Pep, my brain on Christ. Refocus myself. Um, get, get my lens of my mind and the lens of my heart focused on Jesus Christ, not on the current events. If I do know the current events, then I need to be around people that know how to pray and people that want to put the Lord Jesus Christ first. If not, forget it, man. We're, we're, we're going to sink. The whole ship's going to sink if we start focusing on the news and not focusing on the good news of Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. I hope that's encouraging to you, and I hope it gives you a little bit of guidance to, to keep looking to Jesus. And how do you look to Jesus? Look to positive leaders, look to positive friends, and look to the Word of God, and look to, thus saith the Lord, for your life. What is God saying to you? So look to Jesus. Now, let's go in our Bibles, and let's, let's do a little uh, um, uh, catching up now. We're going to get into uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, if you could turn your Bibles there. And we're going to start with verse 11. And what we're going to do in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 is we're just going to uh, go over the scriptures that we went over uh, last week. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. If you have it, say, Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. Now, what uh, Paul has just finished telling the Corinthian people is that, man, there is a bunch of sinners out there in this world and then in verse 11 as he tells them man there's a bunch of sinners out there. there there's a lot of perversion he says in verse 9 and 10 he says do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God so the unrighteous meaning the uh, of those that aren't born again and he says do not be deceived in verse 9 neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, or people that like to cause problems and fight. He says, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Extortioners are people that use force or threats to take other people's money. That's what an extortioner is. But he goes on in verse 11, and he makes it really cool. He says this, he says, and such were some of you. Notice he's writing to the Corinthian people. He says, hey, and you were just like that. And some of you on Facebook, 
Not just us in here. Some of you, you were just like that. We were, man, we were just like anything from A to Z. And he says in verse 11, and such were some of you. But, notice that but. But usually when the English language erases what someone just said. You know when someone tells you something and they say, hey, well, look what you did. And they say, yeah, but. What yeah, but means, forget what you just said because what I'm going to tell you is more important. That's what that means. And, and Paul says, hey, fornicators, homosexuals, all this stuff, they'll not inherit the kingdom of God. He says, and such were some of you. But you're not like that no more. He says, but you are washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. So if you say, well, show me a scripture about I'm washed. Look, you're washed. Where do you find that at? John chapter 1, verse 12. What does it say? To as many as received him, to them he gave power to be sons and daughters of God. What else? 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. The old stuff is past and all things become new. Then he says you were sanctified. In other words, you were set apart. In other words, you've made a decision to live a different life. See, that's the, tr the tricky, tough part for a lot of people that become Christians. They're having a hard time in many cases... To, to be set apart. We have to set ourselves apart. We can't be doing the same things we were doing. We can't go. We can't be with. We can't act the way we used to act. Because Paul is telling us you are set apart. You're sanctified. You can read that in Romans chapter 6, verse 17, 18, and 22. That you're not the same person. You are holy. You're set apart. We can't act the same way. I, I can't do that. I can do the sign the one-way sign, I can do the peace sign, but I can't throw the other signs. You see what I'm saying? I got to throw the signs of Jesus Christ. That's what I have to do. I can't do those other things or any other signs on the freeway. It's all about Christ. We're new. Some of you are you're a little slow on the draw, huh? You kind of cut those. Oh, yeah. Pal, I got it. All right. The other thing is we've been justified, Paul says. In other words... It is your new standing before God. You are now sinless because of Jesus Christ. This justified is a statement. Uh, uh, uh. It's a, it declares somebody righteous as in the court of law. In other words, you're here going through a trial, but you've been found guilty. You are now justified. There is nothing wrong that anybody can hold against you. It's a, it's a legal term that you are now clean. Folks, you're clean. We talked about that last week. What has done this? It is the name of Jesus, and it is because of the Spirit of God. You could read John 16, verse 8, when it talks about the Spirit of the Lord is the one that has washed us, sanctified us, and justified us. So then when we go on into verse, uh, let's go to verse, verse 12 now. The title in my Bible, it says, glorify God in your body and in the Spirit. Let's look at Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. This is a very foundational scripture that once you get the scripture and put it into your life, it will help you, it will help me on how I live my Christian life. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. So Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. Look what it says. Pay attention real close. Listen to this. If you want to see a change in your life, look at Galatians 5.13. Listen what it says here. For you, brothers, notice he's talking to Christians. For you, brothers, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. But through love, serve one another. What Paul here now in Galatians is telling the Galatian church, he's saying, look, guys, you've been saved. You're brothers. You're born again. However, just because you're called to liberty, don't use your freedom to live or practice sinful behavior. There comes a time when you have to get the grace of God, apply it to your life, but don't take advantage of the grace of God. In other words, if I was to stand here and say, Hey, man, God is so gracious for me, but you know what? Um, I'm going to blow up this building. I, I, don't, know, I don't know why I said that. But, uh, or, you know, hey, God is good, but I am going to still, uh, you know, chip a little bit. Uh, 
you know, God is good, but you know what? I'm still going to fornicate a little bit. You know, hey, because God knows. Praise God. God understands. You know, God sees everything. You can't judge me. Well, actually, we can judge your behavior in the church, but that's in the church. But the ultimate judge to judge you eternally is God. I can't judge nobody eternally. But I can judge a person's behavior. I, I judge my own behavior. I try to put myself in check all day long, every minute. I'm trying to put myself in check. I really am. Because I'm, I'm that messed up. I need Jesus every minute. So do you on Facebook. Some of you. And we all do too. So we have to understand that we can't, just because of the grace of God and we're saved, think that we can live the way we desire to live. We can't live by the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. We have to live according to the Lord and how the Lord wants us to live. So now let's go back to uh, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Let's look now at verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. Stay with me. We're going to enjoy this part of the Bible now. Glorify God in your body. And in the spirit, we read Galatians 5.13. Look what verse 12 says. Verse 12, if you have it, say amen. amen. All right, good. That was good. Whoever said that. Amen. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12, and we'll read up to verse 20. It says, all things are lawful for me. Pay attention. This is heavy stuff. This is really good practical stuff for me and for you. It says, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Food for the stomach and the stomach for foods. But God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. But or I'm sorry, do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I take the members of Christ, my body, and make them members of a harlot or a prostitute or of a whore? Certainly not. Verse 16, or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Verse 18 says, flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's, which belongs to God. Now, all things are lawful. What that simply means there is all things are permitted. And this is Paul speaking. He said, I could do, I could do anything. I could do whatever I want. I'm a Christian. Hey, all things are permitted. All things are, are, are lawful or permitted for me. But all things are not helpful. All things are not profitable. I would be around uh, some youth pastors sometimes, and I remember there was a little talk. This is probably in the... Uh, in the 80s where one youth pastor, some national youth pastors and leaders there, and one of them said, oh yeah, I was hanging out with so-and-so last week and we had a sandwich together and uh, he ordered a beer. And he says, and I was with him. And he says, I was a little surprised, but I knew that he felt the liberty to do that. So he was sharing this story with us and I started to think, I said, man, if, if, if I had a beer, I would want two. And if I had a two, then I'm going to want three. And I said, I'm going to get myself in trouble. So I have to think about my life. And I have to think if, if I do one little thing, if I give in to something, I'm going to want more. And I'm going to want to do that. And I'm going to want to satisfy the flesh that way. He says, all things are lawful. And you know that there are some people that they could drink a beer and it's not a big deal for them. But for someone like you or me, maybe we can't do that. So we have to think about that. Okay, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but let me read some stuff for you. Paul's saying all things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. In other words, I'm not going to give um, the keys to my life to any 
habit, or any vice. Lawful, but I will not be brought under the authority or influence of them. Number two. Now you can say, well, I'm different, you might say. Uh, I can do whatever I want. I'm free to do that. And others will say, like Paul, I'm free to do that, but I'm also free not to do that. See, some people say, I'm free to do that. I can do this. But others will say, I'm free to not do that. So the freedom is both ways. It's not just, well, you're a Christian. I could do this. I'm a Christian too. It's like, no, I'm a Christian, and I'm free not to do that. Does that make sense to anybody? Okay, good, good. And number, the third thing I wanted to share is, my question is, why as a Christian would I or would anybody want to argue to do something that is questionable? Well, you know, that you weren't show me. You know, and those are called the gray areas, where people say the gray areas. Uh, this is a gray area right here, my hair. <laughs> but in regards to your life and your morality and following Christ, there's people that say, well, you know, that's a gray area. That's a gray area. There's nothing really said about that. The fourth thing is, why would you argue? Why would I argue about something when it can offend a younger Christian in the Lord? What if somebody said, hey, well, Pep's, Pep drinks beer. You know, uh, you know, Pep's living with that chick. Um, you know, uh, Pep, does, Pep, Pep does these things and, you know, he's still a Christian. Do you get what I'm trying to say? If you want the Lord to use your life, and if I want the Lord to use my life, then there's just certain things that maybe are permitted, like maybe, you know, drinking some wine or drinking a beer or uh, like some people do. Maybe I could do that. However, if, if I do that, I could cause somebody to stumble. And they may say, well, he, he does it, so I do it. And then that person who followed my example says, well, I'm doing two or three beers because I can't handle it. So it's best for me that I don't do that. Yeah. Maybe you need to think about that in your life. Maybe your testimony could be hurting or maybe helping other people, how you live. You think about it. It's your life. You're reasonable people, as Alistair Begg says. See where you're at. This is between you and the Lord. The fifth thing I want to say is, you may or I may be able to handle something and not get it twisted, but someone else might not be able to handle what you can handle. Now, if you want to read a little bit more into that, look at Romans chapter 14, verse 1 through 14. Read that. Romans chapter 14, verse 1 through 14. And I kind of mentioned the gray areas. Let me write, let me tell you what I wrote about gray areas. Uh, the gray areas would be, and I'm going to ask some of you what is a gray area. So I'm going to ask you to shout it out in a minute. But hold on, let me read what mine were. The gray areas would be what you eat or don't eat, right? Um, I'm, I'm vegan, not, not that any of you care, but I, I've been vegan for about a year and, and a couple of months. My daughter's been vegan for about three, year, three or four years. So I wanted to copy her to see what in the world she's getting herself into. When, is, is she gonna get better? Is she gonna get worse? Is she gonna get stronger? You know, what's gonna, so I said, I'm gonna do what my Hita's doing. So I'm, so I was, okay, I'm vegan too, you know? <laughs> so I, I went for it and I feel great, seriously. I'm not promoting veganism, but I'm just saying. But you may say, oh, well, Pep, he's vegan. He's weak. I, I'm a man. I like carne asada. I like pollo. I like uh, fish and uh, meat and, and, and pork and, you know, you know, you, know, you, you want to eat meat, man. Go for it. You could do that. But I'm vegan. I can eat leaves like that too. <laughs> I'm just playing Be being vegan is vegan's good. I love it. So so um, you may think that's weird. I may think something else is weird, but you need to go before the Lord. But the Bible tells us not to put people down who eat meat. But the Bible says of the meat eaters, don't put down don't put down those who don't eat meat. So each one is required to answer to the Lord Jesus Christ within their life. Some people like to go to the movies, but none of you can right now. <laughs> but some people love the movies. Some people love rated R movies. Some people like violent movies. Some people like movies that are a little bit risque. And, and it won't bother you to see a, a, 
uh, a woman half nude uh, uh, or, or uh, along those lines. Some people say, oh man, they're gonna start showing that a sex scene. I'm, I'm gone, I'm not gonna watch that. Um, I have issues with gangster movies. I mean, I, they, I could see shootings and, oh, oh heavy, you know, uh, you know and, but, but I, I, I'll watch gangster movies. But if something comes up where sexual, I'll just change it or I won't watch it. I'll just say, you know what, I can't watch this thing, man. I gotta watch something that is not um, putting bad negative thoughts into my brain that have to do with you know, sexual immorality. So I have to watch that. Uh, so I, I, I block that out from my life. I just don't do that. Um, I don't need any help <laughs> from, from Hollywood to try to get me to think bad. You know, the devil's already doing it. I, I don't need Hollywood to help me now. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on, be real. Y'all right. looking at me like, uh, huh? did he just say that? <laughs> I just said what you're doing. No. We all battle, folks. You're, yeah. You battle as well. Yeah. Let's be real with that. And let's give it and surrender to the Lord. What are some other? Get ready. I'm going to ask you what your gray areas are. Uh, another one is the words people use. There's some people that get away with using, uh, uh, you know, God. D D A M N, and and there's people that'll use it on faith, ah, you know, and ah, what a you know, uh, uh, I'm gonna say this, and I mean this with all due respect. Some people say that you know, freaking, oh, yeah. and, and they say that, and and it's just a substitute word for, yeah. I'm not gonna say that, but you see, you understand what I'm saying. Imagine you in front of your brothers and sisters in the Lord, or your own children, and you're saying, ah, that, you know, but you say, you know. Freak, right? You, you say that ing. It's like, what are you? What's the message you're giving? I don't allow that in my house. My daughter doesn't say that. She's 24, and she calls the shots. But on this one, I call the shot on that. One. <laughs> but but she's cool. Other people, you, maybe you say it. Maybe you're fine. You and Jesus, you guys are good with that stuff. I know it's, it doesn't work for me. For me. Um, what about the places you go? I remember Disneyland was getting a lot of flack because they were promoting, you know, the, the gay, well, the Dodgers do the same thing. They had the LGBT day and, and a lot of places doing that. But I'm like a Disneyland a pass holder. And, you know, they were doing a lot of this LGBT supportive this and supportive that. And I know a lot of folks within the LGBT community work at Disneyland. And, and I know that as a fact because of um, some family members. So... I'm aware of that. So people say, ah, Disneyland, blah, 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 and this and that. And I'm saying, I got my pass. I'm going to Disneyland. I, I want to see Mickey. I want to see Minnie. I want to have my Starbucks right there on Main Street, man. That's why I'm going. I'm not going to support anything like that. I'm going to Disneyland. Where are you going? I'm going to Disneyland. But some of you say that's wrong. You shouldn't go support Disneyland. Well, that's your conviction. That's what you do. That's okay with you. I'm going to Disneyland. Do you see the battle that Christians could get into? Paul's simply trying to get it straight. He's saying, hey, some of you eat meat, some of you don't eat meat. Some of you say things and some of you don't say these things. But he, he deals with it. Now, I don't want you to, 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 to use this, what I'm trying to tell you, in a mature way to say, oh, well, I could go ahead and go do that stuff. No, you have to deal with that with the Lord. You have to see what does God want to do. I'm telling you what I'm going through on a daily basis. You need to see what you go through. Are you pleasing the Lord? Do you even care to please the Lord? Do I care to please the Lord? So, gray areas. Some people like to dance. Oh, so I'm scared. I'm going dancing this Friday, praise the Lord. And they'll go dance. And they'll, you know, do the, you know, tira chancla, and they'll do all this stuff, and they'll be right there, oldies, and swami, you know, whatever. And, and there's some people that they love to go dance, and they'll dance. And, and they're Christians. And, and they will dance and they will get down with their own. Me, I can't go dance and I can't, you know, trip on oldies because what that does for me is it, it oldies do not bring good memories to me. It, it, it brings something worse for me, oldies. Except Brick House. <laughs> I'll hear that song, Brick House, and it reminds me of, I won't say names, but, but the guys, my homeboys, because we'd be dancing right there, Brick House, bam, 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 and we would be having a great time, and it was fun. But then there's other times when there was bad things that happened. Fighting, violence, trucha, watch out, police, just fear, bad memories. So, so I don't go out and dance. Um, 
I just don't do that. That's me. Now you have to check with the Lord and see if he's allowing you to do that. And then you start moving, and then people start check, looking. What, what's going on there? Hey, hello, operator. You know? You, you have to be careful. You have to see what is the Lord doing in your life. Oh, is that an amen or what? <laughs> is this a tough message or is this a... How many of you hear this kind of stuff being spoken before? A couple of you hear this kind type of message? And it's right here in the Bible. So you say, well, wait a minute. I didn't see that. Well, look. Look what he says here. Verse 13. Oh, what's a gray area for you where you're kind of... Maybe not you, but you heard about. Anybody want to shout one out? Like, hey, is this okay? Or... Yes. You know, you just stay away from people, places, and things. Yeah. You, and, then you, and then we become hermits, right? We just... Hey, that sounds good to me. just want to serve the Lord. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's a good, and that's kind of where I'm at. And I'm sure a lot of you, that's where you're at. You say, I just want the Lord. I don't need no gray areas in my life already. I don't need that. What's that? Parties. Yeah, there's, there's parties that go on. Yeah. Or you time them, you know, you go right in the beginning. Yeah, you, you know, there, there's just different things. I remember I would go to parties and I walk in and, and the family stuff and the people be drinking beers and all of a sudden Pep shows up. You know, like if I was COVID-19 or something, you know. Like, Here comes Pep, you know. Boom, they would have their beer and then all, next thing I know, people are coming out with the red plastic cups. You all know what I'm talking about. Pep's here. Where's that blue plastic cup? Where's that red plastic cup? Pep's here. And one time someone told me, man, one time someone told me, every time you show up, people get all afraid of you. Because I said, look, I choose not to drink out of the red or blue cup. I want to bottle water. They could drink whatever they want. They could do whatever they want. And if I'm there, it doesn't mean i got to participate. But I'll tell you what, I was affecting their, you know, taking the edge off. I was affecting their life. I just want to serve God, folks. I just want to serve the Lord. So another gray area. So parties... Listening to oldies. Yeah, yeah there, there's some... Oldies are probably more, as far as I know... Well, let me not give my judgment here. I'm giving you a professional analysis. What? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, oldies. So there's a lot of Christian oldies. That's, that's a good thing. There, there, there's some good ones out there. there. I know, I know. Preaching in the park. You know, there's some people that change the word, and there's some good ones out there. We just got to keep on praying that God raises up really good, good singers, man. Good singers. Uh, Sister Josie does real good with singing oldies. Uh, she does good. Um, yeah, but it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Yeah. It is a tough one. Tupac, I mean, I, why do I look at, I look at Joe? Tupac. <laughs> but, you know, Tupac got some good music. I mean, Snoop Dogg, you got this, and you're hearing the beat. Hey, you, 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 you know, and you want to get into that. It's like, you just have to just, what does the Lord want for my life? What is the Lord doing? Check it out with the Lord. Verse 13, we'll stop right there. Uh, so we, I just got about five minutes, and then we're going to close. We'll pick up next week. We're going to talk about your body as the temple of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to break it down big time next week. But let's finish with this. Verse 13 said, food for the stomach and stomach for the foods. Let me, let me, let me see if I can explain this. Foods for the stomach and stomach for the foods. But God will destroy both it and them. And then he says, now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. Wait a minute. Food for the stomach, stomach for the foods. And then he goes into sexual immorality. Someone, a commentator, said that this saying, food for the stomach and stomach for the foods, was a saying back in Corinth. That that's the way they talked. But what they were really saying is, hey, sex is for the body and the body is for sex. So Paul's bringing that out, and then he addresses it when he says sexual immorality. You guys tracking with me? Food for the stomach, right? Hey, food, it's for the stomach. The stomach is for the food. Food and sex, physical things, it won't affect your inner man, is what the Corinthian people were surrounded by within their culture. Hey, I can have sex. I'm not married. I can be... Uh, 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 
discovering my sexuality because, hey, sex is for the body and the body is for sex. But then Paul comes back and look what he says. But God will destroy both it and them. You guys with me? God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. And the Lord is for the body. So food for the body, the body for food, sex for the body, the body for sex. And then Paul says, no, God is going to destroy both of them. That saying, that cliche, you know, we do what we do, I say, or uh, uh, it is what it is, you know, uh, food for the body, the body for food, sex for the, that's what they would say. That was one of their sayings. Like we all have sayings today. And then he says, he says here that, comment now the body it seems like Paul is making a shift and getting to the issue of sexual behavior remember in 1st Corinthians a few chapters before we were talking about the guy who was having sexual relations with his stepmother back then it actually meant it was his mother that's the way they took it literally so Paul is dealing with the Corinthian church that had the issues with sexual immorality what would be sexual immorality for us today? Of course, we know what that is. We're, we're not fools. But one that people try to hide is pornography. Oh, well, you know, no one sees what I'm doing. Uh, nobody knows where I've been on my computer. Well, God knows. God sees. He's aware where I've been on my computer, and he's aware where you've been on your computer. So... Now the body, seems like Paul is making a shift and, and getting to the issues of sexual behavior. He's addressing an equally troubling issue with the powerful comparison of your body as the Holy Spirit's temple. So, a food, stomach, stomach, food, sex, body, body, sex. He says, God will both destroy it and them. Because your body is not for sexual immorality. You guys with me on that? Your body is not for sexual morality, but for the Lord. Your body is not for, for pornography. Your, your body is not for different sexual relationships and experiences outside of marriage. But for the Lord, and the Lord is for your body. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Verse 14 says, And God both raised up the Lord. So if your body is for the Lord, then he starts talking about the Lord. And I'm finishing with this last verse. He says, and God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Romans chapter 8, verse 11 to 14. Let me read this. It says, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body through his spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brothers, we are debtors. In other words, we, we owe we don't owe the flesh jack. It doesn't say that there. But he says, we don't, owe the, not, we don't owe the flesh to live according to the flesh. Folks, you don't have to obey your natural, physical, sinful desires. You don't owe it anything. You don't have to drink. You don't have to shoot up. You don't have to fornicate. You don't have to go to pornography. Neither do I. We don't have to do these things. We don't have to sock them up. We don't have to kick them down. We don't have to break, destroy. We don't have to do these things because our bodies, brothers, we don't owe our body anything. We don't owe the, nat the simple nature anything. We have to live, for verse 13 says, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live by the spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body and you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. And there's so much more I want to talk about, but we're going to close in prayer now. I'm going to, I'm going to pray for two things, and I know there's people on Facebook, and if you're out there on Facebook, we got to do this. And if you're in here right now, and, and you don't know the Lord, and you're not born again, and you're not saved, if you would like to give your life to the Lord, there's five simple things we need to know. Number one, we're sinners. Number two, our sin will send us to hell. Number three, only Jesus can save us. And number four and number five, the Bible tells us that we need to confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead will be saved. That's in the Bible, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. 
And all those things I said are found in the Bible. So if you're on Facebook and you want to accept the Lord, or if you're in here with us and you want to accept the Lord, all you need to do is repeat this simple prayer after me. It's a prayer of faith. So let's bow our head, everybody. Those of you on Facebook, you want to, you want to say this prayer with us? Just bow your head. And I want all of us, especially if you're here and you want to accept the Lord in, in the house here, just simply say, Heavenly Father, I come to you now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm a sinner and my sin will send me to hell. But I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross. He rose from the dead and he's alive today. Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me. Wash me. Justify me. Purify me. Right now, I'm saved. Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Say that. Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, all the Christians that are struggling with these type of sins, we talked about fornication, homosexuality. We talked mainly about those things. And, and maybe you're struggling with gray areas of your life. You don't know what to do. I would simply say pray about it. And, and continue to seek Jesus. We would see Jesus. Uh, looking unto Jesus. Seek first the kingdom of God. Christians do that. Commit yourself to the Lord. And you watch all them gray areas that you're thinking about. God will show you. And God will reveal his ways to you. So if you're a Christian in the house, in the building, or on Facebook. I'm going to pray for you. And we're also going to pray that if you need physical healing that you'll be healed as well. But first let's pray for the Christians. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all the Christians that are struggling. Struggling with fornication, uh, with homosexuality, with pornography, uh, with any sin that they feel dirty, they feel guilty, they feel miserable. That you would forgive them, forgive all of us for any lust of the eyes, pride of life, lust of the flesh. Forgive us, Lord, and forgive those that are miserable as Christians because of of, of seeking fleshy things. Lord, it's time for us to let those things go and to be filled with the Spirit. Lord, convict the Christian, but free the Christian and, and renew the Christian and bless the Christian and give joy to the Christian who lays off the weight and sin that has beset them and fill them with your Spirit. Let them be fruitful. Give them souls let them lead people to Christ. Let them take people to church. Bring them to church. Do good things, Lord, in their lives. In Jesus' name. Amen.